It has been meditated upon, argued and fought over for thousands of years. Hinduism is the world's oldest faith and it brings together within it everything from the most soulful contemplation to the most boisterous rituals. Just under 80% of Indians define themselves as Hindus. India has been a majority Hindu country and the world's most diverse and plural nation for a very long time. But what does Hinduism really mean today? Can it address our deepest anxieties and our most pressing questions? Does it divide or does it unite? I will ask all those questions to some of the finest minds in the world in this very special series called Being Hindu. I'm Hindul Sen Gupta. Welcome to my show Being Hindu where I try to contextualize what it means to be Hindu in the 21st century. I'm delighted to have a man on my show who can only be described as legendary. This is a man who's taught for 50 years, generation after generation of Indians, how to understand our culture, our tradition, and of course, that language of the gods, Sanskrit. I'm of course referring to Dr. Kapil Kapoor, the man who also wrote the Encyclopedia of Hinduism. Dr. Kapoor, it's a rare honor and privilege to have you on the show, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, I'm sir. I'm very happy and I feel honored to be here. I want to begin by asking you a question. Mm. A question that has come up again. A question that we must finally definitively answer and you're the best person to answer. The swastika, which is considered holy Sorry. by the Hindus for yeah. thousands of years, yeah. was misappropriated yeah. wrongly, criminally, some would say, by the Nazi party and Hitler. And why is that always held up as an example? Even in a recent article, the construction of the building where Sanskrit is taught at the Jawaharlal Nehru University, where you taught for many, many, many years, which is designed in the shape of the swastika, was questioned again, linking it to Nazism. Why is this happening, sir? Why are people making such a vile connection? Mm -hmm. Well, uh if you associate something which we hold as sacred with something evil in another situation, that doesn't make what we hold as sacred itself evil. That somebody misused it or used it, I will not go into that question. But the fact is that it was not borrowed from Hindus. Uh, Swastik is a proto-Indo-European, you know, figure. I won't even call it a symbol. It's a figure. And uh, it is a, like our, uh, you know, yantras and other, they, it's a geometrical design. And uh, it is held sacred not only by Hindus, but it is held very sacred by the Jainas. So could you tell us a little bit about why it's <laughs> sacred? Why is the swastik so sacred to us? Many people don't know that. Uh, you see, swastik is one of the forms which are sacred. As I said, the yantras, shiri yantra and other. They are in the form of a triangle or they are squares because uh, if you read Natya Shastra, Natya Shastra, that is about, uh, there is always a debate about uh, dates of Indian texts and thinkers because we are not a biographical people. For us, individuals are not important. Ideas are important. The, uh, the Natya, the, the, the Natya Shala, Natya Shala, the, the theater where the performance takes place, is described in, I think, the fourth chapter, maybe third, fourth chapter. And geometric, you know, with a very clear calculation. So, although, Geometry was the central science of the Greeks, just as language was the central science of the Hindus. Mm. I am for the moment, you know, using the same word. Uh, but Indians, the, 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 this uh, 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 Jyotisha, mm. which is considered astrology today, which in fact is astronomy, is in fact mathematics. Mm. Because Aryabhatta, our astronomers, 
they measured the movements and the distances measured exactly exactly mm. and by observations so mathematics are a, is an ancient science in india mm. as a, a, our good friend obama said in bombay that zero is your invention mm. and without mm. zero there would be no computer science that's right so is the value of pi yes so there are many things yes and uh, in fact i mean as as uh, as one mathematician american mathematician has written actually the pythagoras theorem for instance yeah, should there be is called the buddha theorem oh yes, yes it is in fact there is and because you know we were uh, uh, defeated on the battlefields and we were uh, subjugated uh, by force although the uh, the mind the mind was not subjugated till 19th century it's when the with the british that the mind you see uh, in the in, there is an ancient uh, hymn in atharva veda hmm? it is called in the prithvi sukta is a sukta prithvi sukta where to the earth, hymn to the where earth, the so poet so. says uh, atharva veda is one of the four yes, of course. it is the fourth yeah. and uh, Uh, maybe people not many people know atharva ved is the veda of the zoroastrians the atharvans the yes. fire worshipers yes. there is a shloka o mother earth destroy those who want to subjugate my rashtra by shastra or shastra hmm this is atharva ved unfortunately by weapons or by knowledge source. or by shastra shastra see only one matra ka bhed hai shastra aur shastra mein right and without shastra you cannot defend the shastra that's right and without and, weapons, with, and cannot... without shastra you have no civilization that's right no civilization so civilization needs weapons and intellect it needs shastras yeah and to defend shastras It to defend shastra. what shastra stand for dharma yes. to defend dharma you need strength strength of arms so your gods all gods carry arms weapons mm. you know rama carries a bow krishna carries a Surashan chakra Kutra. you see indra has a bolt Aha. they have a wahan and they have a weapon because it needs to be defended that's right i heard one swami ranganathanand ji of the ramkrishna mission in 1961 yes and uh, i was very young then and uh, swami ranganathan ji was not that old right. in that 61 he his line got etched in my mind right. he said ours is a beautiful civilization but it needs to be defended hmm. defended so you have in this country in the tradition in our intellectual tradition a long a long uh uh i i'm hesitating to use the word history mm. you have records of uh, yes records of thinkers records of dharma raksha you see the right. defenders of dharma dharma now the dharma has been defended both mm. by shastra mm. and by shastra mm. so man like shankaracharya defended by shastra yes but but also established uh, the nath sampradaya the not nath the 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 night templars the akhadas yes. the ten akhadas which still exist today right, yeah. the sadhus you know the naga the naga sadhus. naga sanyasis right the he established sadhus. the system they were warrior sadhus and uh, guru gobind singh who is unique because he comes at the you see you begin with the uh, adi shankaracharya and you come to guru gobind singh in the 17th 18th, 18th right. century right. through a long line of defenders yes. and guru gobind singh is unique because he was three in one hmm. he was a poet he was a soldier and, and a he monk. was a monk yes because he wrote shastras also yes he fought with the shastra yes and he established an order khalsa that's right militant order yes. so you see hindu the hindu way of life hindu way of life which is the alternative yes to contemporary civilization the yes. only alternative yes. which is why it is perhaps hated by all mm. because it is the alternative and it is a natural alternative the natural impulses of man you know mm. the natural whatever we believe whatever we have conceptualized whatever we have constructed we have done that emanating from the essentially harmonious nature of human beings 
So you see, if you are born, a child who is born, he is in fact born a Hindu that way because he smiles, he is aware of some power and he is rid of, he doesn't have all the negative impulses, no avega, no avega, he is mera, tera, there is no other for him. But as he grows up, you know, all he picks things. up all these things. So tell me, sir, I wanted to ask you, if we did so many great things, and if we are so plural, how is it that we have banes and, and, and evils and, and worries and, and issues within our system? How is it, if, we, if the Hindu way of life is so vast and so hmm. all-encompassing, hmm. Critics would say, what about the caste system? No, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about centuries of oppression? Mm -hmm. How did such a vital, integral, humane system also be capable of such injustice? It is pluralistic. There is no doubt about it. Right. It's pluralistic. Right. No other civilization says there is a given truth. Yes. But the wise you know, give it different names right. yeah. and there are different paths Absolutely. and all paths lead to the truth. truth yeah. No other civilization says this. That's right. The modern civilization says globalization is a market, global market. We say the whole world is a family. No other civilization says this. Mm. And we are pluralistic. Mm. We have, uh, you see, because, look, there are two sources of human knowledge. Right. Only two. Right. One is the Hebraic, yes. the other is the Vedic. Right. They are two antonymous yes. sources of knowledge. The Hebraic system, which generated three faiths, Judaism, Islam and Christianity, mm. Judaism, Christianity and Islam in that order, and the Vedic, which has generated Sanatan Dharma, uh, Jainism, Buddhism, Sikhism. Four. No, they the are West Asian, the, the West Asian religions and the Indic religions, so Indic. to speak. Yeah. Religions will not use the word. Faiths. You see, Philosophies. because religion, right. uh, religion means religion has five elements. Fair enough. You see, it has a church, mm. it has a text, mm. it has a deity, yes. it has institutionalization, right. that is a priestly class, and there is heresy. Mm. Heresy. Mm. And in Hinduism, none of these things is That's there. That's right. We don't have a deity. Yes. You want to believe in God? Go ahead. Mm. Don't want to believe in God? Don't. You want to believe in one? Fine. Want to believe in two? Uh, 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 Sita Ram, Sita Ram. You want to believe in many? Go ahead and believe in yes, many. Absolutely. You, know? you don't. You want to believe in your own God? Bring a stone from the river bed. That's right. And you know, you start applying roli and all that and that's your God. So, there is a cafeteria approach in the Hindu <laughs> mind to most of the fundamental right, things. Right. So, it's pluralistic. It's pluralistic. But then, as you say, why such uh, uh, system? In fact, social, you know, there are three levels. The one is the social, one is intellectual, conceptual, mm -hmm. one is practical. Mm -hmm. For any system, any way of life, mm -hmm. or any civilization, you have to analyze it in these three forms. Mm -hmm. Now, in the social, remember, remember, one thing, Hindu civilization is the most ancient civilization that has survived. Mm -hmm. Survived. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you can uh, say the Chinese, perhaps. But the Chinese never do, not, do not have a Rig Veda 5000 years That's ago. Right. So you have a, if, if the Hindus way of life or Hindu civilization was so riddled with evil, so bad, how could it have survived? That fundamental question we should try to answer. Why has our civilization survived, while other much more efficient, monistic, monotheistic civilizations perished? Well, we have variety, we have conflict because we are pluralistic. We are not monistic, we are not monotheistic. We don't kill people who think differently. We don't kill people. And that's why, that's why we keep on fighting among us. We keep on disagreeing, but we keep on living. Okay. Now, I was saying three ways you analyze social hmm. and uh, intellectual and yeah. practical. Yes. Now, Indian Hindu society, Hindu society has certain institutions. Hmm. Huh? Varna, Ashram, Dharma. Hmm and Parivar, hmm. three keywords. 
Now, varna, mm. varna is a word which is used for color. Mm. It is also used for caste, mm. what we call caste. Mm. It is also used for the letter of the alphabet, the sound of the alphabet. Ah, the varna. Now, so the sound and the color. Mm. Sound and the color. Now, if you look at the uh, the the sound uh, for phonogram, they make you know they make charts. Or if you if somebody if you want to paint the house, you ask him to get you a color chart. You see, you cannot clearly move from one color to the other. That is, there is no discreteness. It is a continuum. Sound is a continuum. Color is a continuum. In the same way, the cast is a is a construct in a continuum. And one, and we'll start with the definition of one. It's a continuum, and it is a horizontal system. Mm. It was a horizontal system. You see, like uh, there is no corona, there is no. It's not a vertical system. There was no hierarchy. You see, um, my friend says that in a purusha sukta, where you see the feet as a shudra, mm. mm -hmm. uh, uh, obviously the purusha is lying down. Ah. In fact, he is lying down. So there is no hierarchy there. Right. And then at one time he got up, huh. and the Brahmin went on top. How did this happen? Hey, then? No, that's a, become, but, but listen to this, my friends, ingenious. Uh, he stood up, and the Brahmin went on top. And these days he is doing shirshasana. <laughs> <laughs> the Brahmin is doing shirshasana these days. The Brahmin is at the bottom. <laughs> so Purushukta itself lends itself <laughs> to all these interpretations. <laughs> First, let's take the question. It's a, it was a horizontal system. Right. All horizontal systems, uh, over, by virtue of the use that is made of them, yes. or misuse, yes. occasionally degenerate into vertical systems. Right. Earlier, there was no hierarchy. Right. And it was a mobile. You see, there are many Upanishads written by what we call Shudra. Yes. And and uh, in the in the Alvar literature, Alvar, Nam Alvar. He was a Shudra. That's right. But you see, they saw the greatest Bhakti. I mean, Shudra was not seen as a low category. Not at all. Not at all. It was a horizontal system. And there were four. And a functional division. Functional. Mm -hmm. And in Mahab if you read Mahabharat, the earlier kings, the Mauryas, or if you read a Chandragupta Maurya Artha Shastra, the assembly of the king. You see, it had uh, four Brahmins, mm. and I, I'm not. I mean, I know the I know the proportion. The Brahmins and Kshatriyas uh, four four, let's say. Then the Vaishyas are six, and the Shudras are four. And you see, every caste is represented. Every Varna is represented mm. in that assembly, mm -hmm. and the king is not free. He has to go by that. Now the question is, mobility was there, mm. and mobility was there till we framed our constitution. Our constitution has now frozen the caste. It was never for a frozen system. It was a frozen system. And, and it was oppressive, not in all over India, in entire Hindu society, in certain portions and parts of India. For example, I come from Punjab. And in spite of Mulkara Nanjan try, trying to, Mulkara Janan trying to defame Punjab, in Punjab there was no untouchability. Mm. There was hardly any consciousness of Varna system, mm. you see. Mm. But in certain parts of India it was there. Mm. And one question that everybody must ask, mm. From Mahatma Buddha hmm. to Mahatma Gandhi, hmm. everybody has criticized it. Hmm. Modern people criticize it. Hmm. Yet two things happen. Hmm. In the constitution, you give constitutional protection to the system. Why? Secondly, all the great minds have been against it. Even then it survives. Why? Why, why is this system there and it is it is it is it is not i mean it is the parts and portion oppressive but it makes a society cohesive i give you one idea india is hugely multiple 167000 jatis and a 100 crore people and if you just restrict yourself to one section you know the hindus let's say Although the, this kind of Varna division is there even in the yeah. Christians and others. And the Muslims. But yeah, then, yeah, but then, but the then, Christians for instance the, have the same. Thing. The, there also, then you, what do you find? What do you find? That, you see, so many people, multiple jatis, they are all reduced to four. In fact, uh, it is a, if you are familiar with the Advaita, mm. from multiplicity to one. Yes. Yes. Multiplicity to one. Yes. Through hierarchical categories. Yes. Is social structuring, this is through that. Mm. And then, you know, then 
अबव ऑल देर इज द ऋषि जी ऋषि की कोई जात नहीं पूछता ऋषि का कोई उद्गम नदियों और ऋषि का कोई उद्गम और जात नहीं पूछता टॉप दे आर दोज हुर एट टॉप दोज हुर एट टॉप इन दिस सोसाइटी दे आर नॉट पार्ट ऑफ दिस सिस्टम बट द सिस्टम सर्वाइव बिकॉज इट मस्ट बी सर्वाइंग सम some socially cohesive function okay purpose on that point hmm. i want and to, yeah. oppression hmm. people often talk in the last 1000 years mm-hmm. now in the last 1000 years all the all the hindus were being oppressed in more parts of india because hindus were all subjugated people hmm. their temples were broken they were not allowed to ride they were not allowed to worship they were not allowed to have their festivals where was the time for a small section to be oppressive to the other and mind you the great bhakti movement the great bhakti movement which is a theistic movement yes which is a theistic movement which upholds the hindu conceptual system the most of the bhakti poets are from what we call the oppressed classes they that's are not right. brahmin that's how right. many brahmins are there in the bhakti, bhakti movement poets? that's right how many kings of india were brahmins true and the brahmanic brahmanism and brahmanical oppression i must i think take this opportunity yes. to disabuse the mind of people who use the word brahmanical without thinking about it there were three sampradayas the brahman sampraday brahman mm-hmm. that is vedanta mm-hmm. because brahma is the yes. category yes. and the bauddha sampraday mm-hmm. and the jain sampraday mm-hmm. the bauddha and the jainas called it the brahman sampraday mm. and they also called it the vyakarana the mm. grammarians mm. Mm. now in english unfortunately Everything the brahman brahma b r a h m a n brahman b r a h m a n and the brahmana granthas b r a h m a n and those are our highly educated people english educated people when they read brahm b r a h m a n brahman they thought it is brahman caste it is not it is brahman people right. who cooperate with the core category of brahma that's right core category of brahma you mentioned vedanta yes. you see advaita so it's a from multiplicity to to, to you know so many i tell you there are there are uh, within within varna within varna there are so many other classifications mm. if you somehow if you read uh, and structure this why you see mm. the structure mm. how closely it is structured that's why it has survived why it has survived because it is highly pluralistic multiple and basically all paths lead to truth i want to then come as we come to the end of this interview to the word hindu itself hmm. and well, what it stands for and what does it stand for yeah. and what does it really mean because there are so many people argue that because there are so many philosophies in hinduism actually hinduism has no one philosophy and that's taken as a negative no 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 so if you could you shed see, some light on that first of all the word hinduism is a recent word in the introduction to my introduction to the encyclopedia of hinduism i have written a long article where i have explained that hinduism there is no no belief system as hinduism mm. and if somebody call tells me that tell us about the uh, philosophy of knowledge in hinduism i don't know what is hinduism you see mm. there is this word has taken currency 150 years 200 years when the british came mm. they earlier the word hindu it comes from indus mm. into even today chinese call india into mm-hmm. in fact i was so surprised when i went to china they say hindu i say great mm-hmm. somebody recognizes <laughs> me as hindu i said yes he said go i was not checked <laughs> and there was one country where you know we are treated with respect <laughs> uh, so into indus mm-hmm. indian also comes from there mm-hmm. indo people who 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 built civilization around indus mm. and who live beyond indus mm. it's a it's a pars persian mm. Mm. old persian word mm. ha huh? sa sindhu river right. sa becomes ha ha jaise our sapta ha. becomes hafta ha hafta and uh, sorry like sapta sindhu seven rivers uh-huh. so hafta it is hafta hafta and sa 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 become ha sindhu became hindu that's right those who live on the banks and along the hindu hmm. it was a purely geographical. A geographical term of people inhabiting a land till till gyaneshwar in the 12th century 11th 12th century hmm. and then guru gobind singh hmm. in the 17th century hmm. used hindu in hmm. opposition to the oppressing religion Mm. at that time mm. 
now hindu mm. is not a religion mm. it's not a religion it is the practice it is the so 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 social structure the conceptual structure and uh, the practical way of life of the people who inhabit this land mm. and it's basically it's not a religion uh, it's a knowledge system mm. it is a powerful knowledge tradition perhaps the world's largest repository mm. of knowledge texts knowledge texts witness for example more than 10 million manuscripts which still survive mm. in spite of the burning and loss of time and all that mm. it's a way of life it's not a religion and it is highly multiple highly varied i i have no problem going into a church i have no problem going into a mosque if they let me go i have no problem going into the gurdwara or hebrew a, or the yeah. this and or a but yeah. i i have no problem being a atheist i have no problem being a total you know radical and rejecting everything i continue to be a hindu that's my freedom that's why it is the alternative it is not an imposition mahatma uh, lord krishna after answering 17 questions of arjun in bhagavad gita yes bhagavad gita yes basically he is teaching him his duty right duty in in the 18th chapter verse 63 he says i have now told you everything it is for you to decide that is the freedom that is the freedom that a hindu enjoys for convenience we use the word hindu but uh, one of the six seminaries that invited me they wanted me to speak on um, the hindu knowledge i told them what is hindu you first tell me <laughs> what is hindu as far as i am concerned you see you are a hindu six are hindus buddhists are hindus jains are hindus muslims are hindus everybody is a hindu people who live here because there is something common you know you can't deny the way we look at things the way we look at life it's common and i told them that the first text of what you call hindu first text intellectual is rigveda mm. and the most recent text is guru granth sahib rigveda was the vani of rishis mm. poetry of rishis mm. guru granth sahib is the poetry of bhaktas that's right bhaktas from all over india just as rishis were from all over india and as come full circle guru granth sahib is simply a, a a what you call samambonam of this civilization which the we people called hinduism whatever i i simply uh, because for convenience if somebody questions my existence then i'll say i am a proud hindu but that doesn't mean i hate others Fair because enough. for a hindu there is no other mind That's you right. there is no other in other civilizations the knowledge is gained for power hmm. power over others but here i am told you ma- i must gain knowledge but for power power over whom over myself yeah the self i am my enemy i am my friend the other is in me not outside my last question do you believe india is a hindu country uh well i think it is it is if you go by the community of consciousness yes attitudes but not in the so culturally you're no, saying no, no, civilizationally no, no. intellectually intellectually socially and all even in practice for example pilgrimage mm. pilgrimage is a social practice yes tell me who doesn't do pilgrimage in that's india mm. so culturally right yeah. but that is not again that is not divisive that's what people don't understand that's that, not divisive that's not divisive yeah. that is not to keep away anybody no, this no, is not because no, the hindu doesn't no. say as you said doesn't think of the other <laughs> there's no other and you see every for example don't you think christians or christianity has hundreds of internal divisions yes and yet we call them christian islam has so many divisions in fact they have so they everybody knows that they have divisions yes. but they are all we call them uh, islam islamic system that's right so hindu system has so many divisions the only difference is that there is a tolerance yes and an acceptance yeah. which is a feature of this mm-hmm. and the people who criticize mm-hmm. peep the intellectuals who criticize mm-hmm. they are all basically hebraic mm-hmm. they are oriented in that monistic monotheistic tradition ha ek hona chahiye kaun sa hai matter or mind ha matter or mind 
and you have to make take your choice. choice. How can you have so many? But the Hindu doesn't choose. It's no. matter and mind. It's all there. You choose your, I choose mine. Fair enough. Mm. Thank you very much, Dr. Kapoor, for sparing time. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.